Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Commodity TV and a new edition of our online interview series. Today, we want to talk to yeah, famous mining legend, I would say, David Garrow, follow the CEO from Gold Royalty. Good morning to yeah, Canada. How are you, David? <laughs> well, thanks very much, Johan. Lovely to be here. Yeah, thanks for taking the time. Fantastic. Always a pleasure to talk uh, to somebody like you uh, who has such an experience and such a great success track record. Um, yeah, CEO of Gold Royalty. The royalty business is a wonderful business, of course. You have no mining risk, but you make money uh, even while, while being there. That is fantastic. And uh, you just... Um, Yeah, uh, published your um, your first quarter results for this year, mm -hmm. and it looks like record total revenue uh, from land agreement proceeds, of course, from royalties, uh, from streams. And uh, you have uh, had a nice delivery of gold equivalent ounces, the so-called geos. So it looks to me like, because we, we were talking in the past several times the last two years, it looks like now is really delivery time this year for you. It is. We're looking at doubling our revenue this year from uh, last year and 60% compound annual growth on a consensus basis and our revenue right through the end of the decade, driven by some of the biggest producing gold mines in North America. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And uh, also, it looks like that uh, you guys start to make money. You have the first free cash flow, right? That's right. So we've pivoted into free cash flow territory this year, positive earnings. And again, that's driven by that revenue growth. Uh, we're crystallizing revenue growth on, on a few places. Uh, one is Cote, which has started production in March of this year and will represent a significant growth in royalty revenue in the second half of the year as it achieves commercial production. And that'll be Canada's second biggest producing gold mine once it's up and running at full capacity. We're also enjoying revenue from our most recent acquisitions, uh, first full year of revenue from Borborema in Brazil, which is Ora's newest mine, uh, which is in construction, but we get pre-production royalty revenue from that. And also, uh, we we're enjoying the first full year of royalty revenue from Cozumel, which is Capstone's high-grade copper silver mine in Mexico. Mm -hmm. Okay, super. Um, so that means uh, in the first quarter, you had 2019 gold equivalent ounces. You, I call it harvested. Yeah. Um, what do you think would be in the next quarters with all those mines really coming on and or are now on stream? Do you think you can, you will go through the 10,000 ounces this year? Yeah, so we're guiding to somewhere between uh, 10 and a half to 11 and a half million dollars of revenue for the full year. And that was using consensus gold prices, which were well below where we're uh, currently experiencing gold. So we'll get the upside benefit of that. What I should point out is we already achieved about 40% of our full year revenue guidance in the first quarter alone. So we've gotten off to an excellent start, mm -hmm. which gives us the confidence with the rise in the gold price with an excellent start to uh, comfortably achieve our production and revenue guidance for the full year. Mm -hmm. Okay, super. Um, you, you just uh, touched on it, $2,000 per ounce. So the question is now, do you get those ounces physically delivered so you can decide when you sell it? Or do you get, let's say, the spot price mm -hmm. when there is the hybrid delivery? Well, these are royalty revenues that they're not streamed, so we're not getting physical delivery, mm -hmm. uh, but they will be effectively at the average gold price um, in any given quarter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that would mean um, today we are at $2,390. My prediction is it will go higher, but let's say, let's, let's, let's assume um, you will get as an average for this year, $2,400, for example. yeah, I mean, that would significantly raise your revenue profile and, of course, the profit profile. Yeah, we're, we're guiding somewhere between four and 5,000 gold equivalent ounces this year. And so we'll get the benefit of that gold upside in the latter three quarters of the year. Mm -hmm. Okay, super. Um, I saw also in one of your press releases that you had like a very low maintenance fee on your royalty generator model. I think it was something well, like twenty thousand dollars. There effectively is no cost associated yeah. with that. In fact, it's become a profit center for us because quite often when we farm those properties out, not only do we get royalties back, but we get work commitments on the properties, and we also get option payments. And last year alone, we generated over three million dollars of land agreement proceeds or option payments on properties we we farmed out. So not only are we generating those royalties for free, effectively through our sweat equity, but we're actually getting paid to generate royalties and we're generating them at the pace of about two to three new royalties per quarter. 
Okay, super. Um, let's dive a little bit more into the portfolio. You already spoke about the Cote mine, Cosamine, Barbarema. Then we have the Ren project also, Granite Creek. Um, but I think also the Odyssey mine, which is Agnico Eagle, um, which is uh, the Canadian Malartic complex. What, what, what will be there for you to bring the future, I would call it? Well, look, we, we are getting royalty revenue currently from the open pit, and uh, we saw a pickup in royalty revenue in the first quarter, actually more than double what we experienced in the previous mm -hmm. uh, Q1 of 2023 from Canadian Malartic. So we're getting a bit of a catch up. They were a little bit behind in production in the Barnett pit, where most of our royalty generation comes from in the open pit. Mm -hmm. But as they're ramping up production from underground, initially from a ramp and then ultimately from the new shaft that's still in construction, we have significantly higher royalty coverage and we have almost hockey stick like growth in terms of our gold equivalent ounces attributable to our, our royalty ground. Uh, that's really driving a big part of our revenue growth through the end of the decade. So as they start to mine exclusively from the underground over the next several years, we're going to see a significant increase in our royalty revenue from that very prolific and long life mine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you, we also saw that you have a strategic alliance with Taurus Mining Royalty Fund. Can you comment a little bit on it? Because I find it quite yeah, uh, funny in that sense that you are a royalty company. Now you are doing the alliance with, uh, with the Taurus Mining Royalty Fund. Where, where do you see, um, let's say, a site, um, um, where, where do you see a site, the size of the deals, which are maybe also possible larger deals in the future? Where else do you benefit from? Well, the, the great thing about the Taurus Alliance is it delivers two key advantages. One is it gives us access to a very deep pool of capital. They have a $200 million dedicated royalty fund that can co-invest with us on significantly larger royalties than we could look at on our own. So we have an alliance where they have to show us royalty opportunities, precious metal royalty opportunities in excess of $30 million that they source. And we do vice versa so that we can look at bigger deals than we could look at on our own on a co-investment basis at the asset level. Uh, but we also we're able to mitigate the, the due diligence costs on those larger opportunities so we can share the due diligence and get also the validation from their technical team on the work that we're doing uh, in our diligence efforts on new royalty opportunities. But it's already paid dividends for us because they helped finance the acquisition of the Barbara Raymer royalty last year. They did a, uh, a convertible debenture financing along with Queens Road Capital uh, into gold royalty to help us finance the acquisition of that $31 million royalty in Borborema. So accessing capital, uh, accessing their expertise, their footprint, they have boots on the ground in Australia and New Zealand, for example, we don't, we have boots on the ground in the Americas. So we're able to show them ideas, they're able to show us ideas. So sourcing new opportunities, but also getting access to a multi hundred million dollar fund to help finance our acquisitions. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how, how many paying royalties you have now, but by, by, let's say by the end of the year, and what would be the plan, let's say over the next three years to bring more into production, meaning sure. getting, yeah, no. how, do you mean harvesting? <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. And it is very much harvesting. We have over 240 royalties in our portfolio and they're all bought and paid for. So it is about harvesting. If we just sat on our hand and not allocated another dollar of capital, we will realize that 60% compound annual growth in our revenue through the end of the decade. And that's at long-term consensus gold price of sub $1,900 an ounce. So we get the benefit of the gold price upside as well as harvesting uh, those gold equivalent ounces from uh, the, the uh, projects that we have not only in production and there's six that are cash flowing currently, but another 14 that are in various stages of construction and development. So within the next three years, we're going to see north of 10 uh, royalties a dozen royalties, in fact, uh, in cash flowing mode that drives that revenue growth. But a lot of that revenue growth is coming from the three biggest gold mines in North America uh, mm -hmm. that we have royalties on. We have a royalty on Canadian Malartic, which we talked about earlier, mm -hmm. on Cote, which we also uh, referenced a little earlier, but also the underground extension of Gold Strike uh, Ren, mm -hmm. which Barrick is currently developing into and expected to integrate into their mine plan over the next several years. That's another big source of revenue growth. So, yes, we have a lot of royalties, including Borborema and Cozumel, that are smaller in scale. But a lot of our growth is coming from the three biggest producing gold mines in North America with the longest lives. So we have that foundational element of our story that will be delivering royalty revenue for our shareholders for many decades to come. Mm -hmm. Okay, super. So let's let's play a little bit with the future. Let's say, let's assume um, 
not 10 to 11.2 million dollars in revenue uh, gold will go higher to me it looks more like you will maybe do this year 15 to 20 million dollar revenues if i'm correct maybe it's it's a hypothetical of course for the regulars it's not a forward looking statement <laughs> um but yeah that's important <laughs> but uh, it looks to me like with that growth pass you could be in let's say two years you could be easily run a 50 million dollar operation here well, that, that's certainly our hope. I mean, again, on a consensus basis, we're exiting a decade with about 30,000 ounces of gold equivalent revenue at $2,000 gold. That would be $60 million mm -hmm. of royalty revenue from the existing portfolio of assets that we currently own. And then again, are completely bought and paid for. Uh, that's all arithmetic. Uh, but again, it, it's, it's dependent on the execution of our operating partners on mm -hmm. their growth plans. Mm -hmm. When we provide guidance, actually, we don't provide long-term guidance. We're just compiling numbers that are there on a consensus basis that it's been guided by the underlying operators. And the great thing about our operating partners is many of them are the biggest operators in the world. We have Barrick and Newmont mm -hmm. and Nico Eagle among others uh, within our operating partnerships. So they're well capitalized. Uh, they're obviously well staffed technically in order to optimize their operations and development stage projects. Mm -hmm. So there might be some room next year to restart the dividend? Well, you know, we'd love to return capital to shareholders. Yeah. We want to be in a position where we're uh, in sustainable free cash flow mode. And we're entering into that, that environment now. Uh, we had our first positive free cash flow quarter in the first quarter of this year and we think that's a harbinger of things to come and uh, when we have positive free cash flow and sustainable positive free cash flow returning to capital to shareholders is something that i know my board is keen to talk about super that's good. glad to hear that because i'm a shareholder too <laughs> <laughs> um other question if i look at the markets gold is moving silver is uh yeah at the breakout level, really, really interesting. At thirty-two dollars, that was one of my targets. But at the same time, it's a breakout level or from the long-term chart. Could you imagine to move maybe a little bit also more towards silver? As to me, this is more like now a industrial metal. It's the metal of the uh, renewable energy, solar, etc. Photovoltaic, um, and we are in the sixth consecutive year of a deficit. So I think we are missing a lot of silver mines and maybe. That is something which uh, would, yeah, would, would be something for you as a royalty company of interest. Well, in fact, we did acquire some streaming silver, I should mm -hmm. say, uh, silver royalties last year in getting a royalty in Cozumel, which is a large copper silver project or mine in Mexico operated by Capstone. So we do have some silver exposure within the portfolio and certainly within our development stage assets with royalties, it covers all of the metals, not just the gold. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we do have significant silver exposure within our development stage and exploration mm -hmm. stage projects. So we have lots of leverage to the silver price already within our portfolio. Mm -hmm. So if you would say like, like um, percentage wise, what, what would you say silver in the future in the portfolio? Well, right now, 95% of the underlying value of our business on a consensus basis is gold uh, with about 5% in copper and silver. Mm -hmm. But again, as some of these earlier stage projects come to fruition, mm -hmm. uh, that'll start to get rebalanced and we'll get much more silver exposure. Mm -hmm. Okay, super. So last question, what's your view on the gold price? <laughs> well, look, I, I have been saying for a long time that um, I think gold will far exceed the real all-time highs we achieved in the early 1980s, which was actually closer to $2,800 an ounce in 2024 dollars. Mm -hmm. And I would say that um, the inflation environment that we find ourselves in today is far worse than what we experienced in the 1970s and 80s, because back then, central banks had a lot more latitude to raise interest rates because debt levels were manageable. You know, at 100% debt to GDP globally, mm -hmm. it was certainly manageable to raise interest rates at 20% and not bankrupt governments. That's certainly not the case today with debt levels at 350% uh, uh, of GDP globally. So you've seen debt service in the U.S. double in the last 18 months to a trillion dollars a year. And it's poised to double again over the next 18 months as Treasury yields reset. Uh, I think you and I were discussing this before uh, we got on the air that there's about... Uh, uh, 17, 18 trillion dollars of treasuries that mm -hmm. need to be reset, need to mm -hmm. be refinanced over the course of the next year to 18 months. And that'll drive uh, debt service up dramatically. I, I, by my estimation, doubling again to $2 trillion a year. And just to give you a sense of perspective, that would be about two out of every $7 of tax revenue generated by uh, the U.S. government. That's not sustainable. And so what that tells you is that central banks have very limited latitude to raise interest rates. 
and they will allow inflation to gallop. And they need to. They need to inflate the debt away. There's no fiscally responsible way to repay it. Mm -hmm. And gold is an accurate barometer of inflation, uh, both current inflation and expected inflation. That's why gold is doing so well. Uh, the CPI numbers that are published by the governments globally uh, really are, de uh, are deceptive because they exclude uh, many of the things that we uh, consume on a daily basis that consume most of our disposable income, and that's food, fuel, and shelter. And when you exclude that from CPI, I think, frankly, it becomes irrelevant. Um, and gold is telling us that real interest rates are negative because inflation is quite a bit higher mm -hmm. than the headline CPI numbers would tell us. And that's why you're seeing capital flow into gold away from other fiat currencies that are continually being debased. And Johan, if you look at gold over a 50 year horizon from when the U.S. government abandoned the gold standard, mm -hmm. it's been a one way trade. Gold's gone up from thirty five hundred thirty five dollars an ounce to twenty four hundred dollars an ounce. Whereas the purchasing power of the U.S. dollar and every other major currency has declined by 96% over that period of time. Mm -hmm. So the capacity to produce fiat currencies is infinite. The capacity to produce gold is extremely finite and getting more finite because of the decline in reserves that we're seeing globally. Yep, definitely. And falling grains and uh, rising costs. And yes, we, we name it. <laughs> no, absolutely. Exactly. I, I think we, you and I, we are on the right business and it, uh, the, the future looks really bright. David, thank you very much for your time. And uh, yeah, please keep on executing because that's the best what could happen for us shareholders. And uh, I think you, 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 so far you have done everything right. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much and talk to you soon. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that was David Garofalo, the CEO of Gold Royalty. And you heard it. Everything is in really fantastic shape. And to be honest, for that, the share price is way too low. And uh, SHC Wainwright, as uh, ourselves, we have much, much higher uh, price targets for the company. We see more a fair value between five and six US dollars per stock. And uh, yeah, it's a real easy double from here today or easy triple. And uh, you really should consider because this is not a usual mining company. This is a company just harvesting, working with a margin of plus 90%. And uh, that's exactly what you want. And they are on the right metals, gold, but also a little bit of copper, a little bit of silver, and the silver uh, part will rise also in the future here. And uh, they work with the biggest companies in the world, top management. Have a look at Gold Royalty. Thanks for watching us and bye-bye from Switzerland. <laughs>